speaking to you now, I'm sure you you had very interesting conversations with all 21 of your icons. My first question about the project is how on earth did you get hold of all of them? It's the beauty of South Africa, I guess. Uh, people fall in love with an idea. People give people a chance here and we had an idea and they gave us a chance. We slept on people's couches. We were introduced to all sorts of people. We had people leaving their jobs, proper jobs, to come and work for us. And it was just one of those wonderful moments in time where we were right time, right place. We worked incredibly hard. We'd work around the world to fund the project, mm -hmm. come back, shoot for three days, go out again. And I think necessity is the mother of invention. Mm -hmm. we, we learned how to be a business. We learned how to be an agency working globally. And I went from being a photographer through to a filmmaker, through to a, uh, the head of an agency, through to a strategist. And not because I wanted to, just because we had to. And we put together a project that reached 180 million people. So it was it was a really cool thing, and one of the best, definitely one of the best professional things I've ever done in my life. It was just, just, just extraordinary. Incredible. Now, who was the most unexpected one of your icons? Who who surprised you the most when you met them? Um, I'd probably say Lillian Singer. Mm -hmm. uh, she was just the warmest most practical, most positive person I think I've ever met. So you've got your Nobel Peace Prize winners, you've got your tutus, you've got your de Klerks, you've got your Mandelas, and obviously with those people to varying degrees you're sitting there thinking, am I really in a room with these, mm -hmm. with these types of people? And to be able to have that time with Mandela and, and obviously time with Tutu and, and F.W. de Klerk was wonderful. But then as you move down the road of this of this project, and you spend time with Dean Gordimer and Kumi Nadu and Evelina Shabalala and and Lillian Singer, and you think, my God, that six hours of my life was just as extraordinary in a very different way mm -hmm. as the time I'd spent with Nobel Peace Prize winners or mm -hmm. presidents of, of of countries, of the world's biggest uh, philanthropists. And to think that I've spent time interviewing Gates and, and Mandela and, the, and these sorts of people, but to be in the room with a, with a Lillian Singo or a Kumi Nodu and to be absolutely taken with their, with their clarity of thought and their morality is, is a really nice thing for South Africa because these people are literally living down the road from us. As we speak here, we've got Desmond Tutu, who's 15 minutes down the street, mm -hmm. in a very humble house in Milnerton, probably with the gate open as we speak. Um, th that, that's the reality of South Africa and I think we take that for granted. I think we take that for granted. You go overseas and I'm, I'm born in Sydney, spent a lot of time in the UK, North America, and you can't get near those sorts yeah. of people. It's just not possible. But here, oh, I saw Kumi Naidu down at the waterfront. He's or, out of control, that Kumi Naidu. Yeah, yeah, he is. <laughs> 100%. <laughs> but he, um, he makes a fair point. Yeah. Most of the time. Yeah, he does. He really does. Yeah. But he is just a ball of energy. Absolutely. Yeah. H how do you stop him? Anyway. <laughs> I don't think you do. That's the point. <laughs> Everyone tries. <laughs> now, um, you were telling some stories at the gala dinner about some of your more stubborn subjects. Mm. Who was the most stubborn person you photographed? Probably the late Nadine Gordimer. Mm -hmm. She was quite difficult. She doesn't like having a photograph taken and the... the the concept behind the portrait was her sitting on these enormous books that we'd had made. That was quite a difficult portrait. Um, Gary Player can be a bit tricky at times, but um, also has a great sense of humour. F.W. de Klerk, that was really the photo that sort of kicked off this whole yeah. concept of you know, fascinating photos and getting him to obviously sit in the lotus position and take his shoes off in a suit was something that shifted our paradigm. And uh, yeah, we had, we had various moments. Mm -hmm. We had various moments. It's interesting you said you accidentally called Mr. Player Gary. Mm. I've also done that before. It's no, it doesn't, <laughs> end, it doesn't end well. Don't do that. No, it doesn't end well. <laughs> now, two items were for auction the night of the gala dinner. Yep. Um, the mirror that uh, sure. Nelson Mandela was holding in the photo and is sitting with you. Yep. And the rest of the portraits are on silent auction until the end of the month. Yes. Why did you choose to do this this way? Literally, there's a whole lot of people who are interested mm -hmm. in collecting these portraits. Uh, all the money goes directly to the Icons charity. And it's 
all about not the sort of the ego of, of the people in the room, but it is really making sure that as much money goes to charity as possible. Yeah. So we're taking overseas bids, we're taking bids from all around, all around Africa, obviously here in South Africa as well. And um, it's just to give these charities, these icons, the best opportunity to showcase what they do and be as resourced as, as best as possible. How can people bid on those photos if they All they have to do is email auction at 21icons.com, make contact and we'll, we'll help you through there. Okay, awesome. What's your next project in the pipeline? We've finished shooting 21 Icons season two here. We'll shoot a third season in color and um, uh, a young South African photographer will shoot it and I will assist. That's great. Which will be super cool. Uh, very talented photographer, Gary, uh, Gary Van Bike and I will assist through that and it's the same team showcasing that in colour and, and our, our narrative is look at the South Africa in the now. Mm -hmm. We know about the previous generations, we know what they stood for, we knew what their struggle was. I guess we now need to be cognizant of what's our struggle now and also be aware that there are some super cool, super amazing people living in South Africa right here, right now, under the age of 35 and doing really positive, cool things for the community. You mentioned season three is going to be in color. Why were one and two in black and white? Black and white was literally, I'm a black and white photographer and we looked back at how we got here. Yeah. How did we get here? We exist, why? Season three is all about the living in the present because it's one thing to look back at the past and say, we need to learn from the past and it's in the other thing, we automatically seem to jump from the past to the future. Well, this is what we can expect in the future or wait till the next generation comes through. But I think there's a huge lesson in looking after the present because the future's pretty, pretty grim without a responsible generation in the now looking after the present. Adrian, thank you so much for joining us. I hope you raise so much money from those so portraits for all of those charities. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it.